in this example, we'll, we'll work an application problem using the law of sines. So uh, this is a, a problem I wrote a few years ago. Well, I think I copied it from my textbook, actually. Um, so I have a PDF of it. I made the diagram myself, and I was trying to get the PDF into Notability. This is the software I'm using, but that wasn't working, so I just took a photograph of um, my computer screen. So that's that's the best, best I could do. So let's say that uh, Dave has recently won an eminent domain case, and he gets to keep his homestead while the state has to divert a mandate toll road around his land. Basically, uh, you know, law is passed, a road has to be built, and his property is in the path of the road, so um, the state needs to buy his land. He doesn't want to, so they you know sue him. They do a legal battle, and he wins, so he gets to keep his property. But the law is still a law. They still have to build the road, so they now have to build it around his property, right? So... Um, I've been having some issues with the iPad. I don't know why. I'm not going to zoom in too much because it's been causing me problems, but we'll see how it goes. So, uh, normally the path of the road is something like, uh, like this it just goes through, right? But that, that now infringes upon his property. So that's not going to work. So basically the, the road has to go around his property, right? And there's essentially a triangle that's kind of hinted at in the diagram. I'm going to make it a little more obvious like this and I'm going to make these points a little more on point um, like that and like that. It's pretty close. So hopefully, um, again, I've been having some issues with the iPad today. Hopefully it's going to play nice with me. So this section here, um, I'm going to change colors real quick. Let's go to a blue. This section, uh, yeah, it's, it's doing it again. I don't know why. Um, I'm hitting something that I should not be hitting. That is not very visible. We will change colors to something else. Um, let's go with this. So this section here, we're going to call uh, L1. This is one of the links I need to know. If I need to know the whole diversion path length, then I need to know all, all, all of the deviations. So that's one of them. Um, this path here... Let's call this L2, and then this path here we'll call L3. So I need to know those path lengths, right? Now, it turns out, if I change colors, that this path is one of the sides of the triangle. I'm going to call this uh, S1 for side one of the triangle. And then this path here, I'm going to call S3 for the uh, one of the other sides of the triangle involved. Now, since I know that... Um, some of these angles involved, I know that this this angle here is 140 degrees. Then, because this is a straight angle, 180 degrees, 180 degrees all the way around, since I know that this is 140 degrees, well, out of 180, what's remaining is 40. So I know this interior angle here is 140 degrees. So I can label that uh, 140, oh, I'm sorry, 40 degrees, okay? Over here on this side, since again I know that this is this uh, this straight angle is 180 degrees, and I know that the exterior is 135. That means that I know that the interior angle is 45 degrees. Okay. This also allows me to find this angle here. Um, basically, I'll call this theta. So theta plus the other two angles, 40 degrees and 45 degrees. This is 180. If I subtract um, 85 on both sides, I'll get the, I'll get that theta is 95 degrees. So I know what theta is. I'll become important in a few minutes to find L2. For now, though, I'm just going to find L1 and L3. I'll find L2 last. So to find L1, what I can do is I know this side length is 1200, and I know this angle here is 95. So I have this angle and opposing side length pair so i can start using the law of signs using that ratio and then i can use this ratio um l2 is in the way sorry about that but basically 45 degrees to l1 that's a ratio i can use for the law of signs so what i can do is the following I can say that um sine of 45 i'm, I'm sorry uh sine of 95 over 1200 Let's zoom out for that uh, sine of 95 degrees over 1200 yeah 
equals sine of 45 degrees over uh, S1, side length 1. So if I cross multiply, I'll get S1 times sine of 95 degrees equals 1200 times sine of 45 degrees. I forgot the degrees up here, so let's just put those in there in the corner. And then divide by sine of 95 degrees on both sides. So S1 equals 1200 times sine of 45 degrees over sine of 95 degrees, which is approximately, I'll throw this into a calculator, 1200 times sine of 45 divided by sine of 95, and I get 851. 0.769. Now L1 is 500 less than that. Uh, so S1 minus 500, which is approximately 351.769. Oops, this is, this is in feet. Okay, so that's L1, basically 352 feet. Okay, so I found uh, L1, right? Now I can find L3 basically the same way, but instead of using uh, 45 degrees, I'll use 40 degrees because this angle and side pair, 40 degrees to S3, I can use that ratio. So sine of 95 degrees over 1200 equals sine 40 degrees over S3. I hope I don't have that backwards. No, nope, no. Nope. Okay, cool. So I can uh, cross multiply S3 times sine of 95 degrees. Clean that up a little bit. Sine 95 degrees equals 1200 times sine of 40 degrees. So S3 equals 1200 times sine. 40 degrees divided by sine 95 degrees and that is approximately so 1200 times sine of 40 degrees divided by sine of 95 degrees and it's 774.292 so that means that L3 which is S3 minus 500 is going to be about 274.292 feet. All right, we are almost done. Um, I found S3, uh, well, L3 and L2. I'm sorry, L3 and L1, I mean to say. So if I go back up here, I still need L2. Now, how am I going to find L2? I don't, I don't, I don't have you know, the information for this triangle. How am I going to do that? Well, it turns out um, oh, I think I hit undo too many times. Yeah, lost a, a cross T there. Anyway, um, so how am I going to do that? Well, it turns out this, this triangle um, is something we know quite a lot about. If we make the assumption that um, the base of that triangle, I guess we'll... Uh, that L2, if we assume that that's parallel to 1200, well, then we can proceed. We can get some information because if those two are parallel, then that means that I know this angle here and this angle here, okay? So let's assume that, which we'll discuss later is not necessarily correct, but we'll assume that for now because it seems reasonable. Like, why would that, that middle path of the diversion not be parallel? Like, of course you would do that. Like, why not? So let's just assume that for the, for a second and see how that goes. And what, what do we get when we do that? Okay, so um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this color and I'm going to redraw that triangle over here and relabel it. Um, the automatic triangle is not working with me. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, that... Okay, we'll try again. We will keep trying. 
There we go. Okay, so let's say that um, this is um, L2, right? We don't. Uh, okay. I I don't know what it's doing. Um, it, uh, all right. L two. I I don't know why it's doing this. I don't. Is it working? Maybe it is. I think it's because I have a picture. I'm trying to draw in a picture. Is really the reason. So L two. Okay, fine. Um. Five hundred. Five hundred. This is ninety five degrees. And. Yeah, so because um, because this is a parallel to this, we're assuming that I know those in two interior angles, they're the same as the ones that we know, 40 degrees and 45 degrees. Okay. So now um, I can find L2 because I know this opposing side angle pair, 545 degrees, and I can use it with this. In the law of sines to figure out what what that um, angle is. Or, I'm sorry, 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 side length. So I can find L two. So a sine of forty five over five hundred is equal to the sine of ninety five over L two. So I can go back down here. So sine of forty five degrees over five hundred is about because again we're we're making a big assumption. So it's not quite right, but we're going to go with it for now. Sine of ninety five degrees over L2, okay? So I can cross multiply L2 times sine 45 degrees. That's about 50 times sine of 95 degrees, okay? So I can divide on both sides by sine of 45 degrees. So L2 is approximately 50 uh, times sine 95 degrees all over sine 45 degrees, and then I can see, well, yeah, but how much is that approximately? So 50 times sine of 95 divided by sine of 45 is about, that seems really small, but that's what I got. So that's 70.442. That seems low, but all right, I, I guess that's it. Hmm. Did I mistype anything? No? All right, well, I guess that's it. Okay, cool. So um, the total diversion, that's going to equal, well, uh, L1 plus L2 plus L3, which is approximately L1 was about 351.769. L2, 70.44. Two. That still seems really low, but I don't. Five hundred, not fifty. There we go. Okay, five hundred, five hundred, five hundred. So it's a uh, seven hundred four. Point four one six. There we go. Okay. I knew that seemed really low. Okay. All right. So, and then L3274292. So, what is that? So, 351.4. Seven six nine plus seven oh four point four one six plus two seven four point two nine two. I get thirteen thirty point four seven seven. Okay, feet, of course, feet. Um, so that, that is the total path that diverts from the original planned road. Now we could ask, what is the diversion? Um, what's the extra? What what is what is the additional um, path?
path that we have to follow. Well, we subtract 1,200 from that, right? So this will be um, 100, oops, 130.477 feet. That is the additional path required because the, the state could not get the land that they wanted to put the road on. They had to go around it. So that is that example. Um, there's many steps. Again, we had to make an assumption that L2 is parallel to the original road path, which is not, it turns out it's not quite right. It's pretty close, but not quite right. Um, so in the next section, we will look at a different technique that will allow us to not make that assumption. Uh, but for now, 130 feet and change. And in a later section, we will see um, a more precise value.